heading back to school can be exciting for students and teachers, but this year it was even more exciting than usual in the town of Burke. Following two years of rebuilding after a tornado, things are pretty much back to normal. In tonight's Eye on Kettle Land, Carter Schmidt takes you to the town during homecoming week to see how the school has recovered three years later. Your 2022 homecoming queen is Bridget Martin. <laughs> It's an exciting week for high school students in Burke as the school crowns its 2022 homecoming king and queen. But for this royalty court, high school hasn't gone as exactly expected. In August of 2019, a tornado barreled through town just two weeks before classes were set to begin. This whole half of the school is ripped off. We had water everywhere, ceiling tiles everywhere on the floor. I was scared that I was gonna, we were going to lose the entire building and thank goodness that we didn't. My room was kind of in shambles and there was no ceiling in my room and um, probably about a third of it was either gone or um, blown, not really blown away but ruined by rain. Principal Tim Sanderson says the old portion of the school, which is the brick building you see behind me built in 1937, received little damage, but the area that was added on in the 1960s received most of the damage. Our gym, um, five or six classrooms, and you know, we were unable to, to start school on time and we had to push that, that start of school back. It needed, needed rebuilt. And then the elementary that's also on the same city block, it needed a new roof and some, some interior work as well. In the meantime, administration had to get creative. Our superintendent at the time, Dr. Eric Pearson, he, he just kind of put together a plan to keep kids here in Burke. Uh, we utilized a, a church across the street for our music program. Uh, we had some construction individuals that split our library up into a couple of classrooms because we weren't able to use any of the classrooms in the 1960s structure. The gym couldn't be used all year. You could come in and you could see the sky, you could see light. Um, so it got an entire new roof, um, new insulation, the entire inside um, up above has been re-drywalled. Um, it's been painted, both the, the ceiling and all of the walls, and then our wood floor is all brand new. Which left a big question, where would students play games and practice for sporting events? We're going to just completely go down to our neighboring school in Bone Steel and try to play all our sports there and forget about rebuilding or are we going to rebuild since our secondary gym, the Civic Center, was also destroyed that night. Taking the year to rebuild and traveling to Bone Steel for practice and games was the decision. Some of the kids that actually had to go through that, you know, they lost out on that year. A normal home, home games in their volleyball and their basketball, um, they missed out on some of those things. Traveling to Bone Steel every day, we lost out on practice time every day, at least 40 minutes, because that's what it took to drive there and back. And we'd played in Bone Steel before, um, but it's still, like, it wasn't our home gym, so it was a little different. And as out of the ordinary as the year was, students and teachers pushed on. Our staff was really good about helping all the kids adjust and kind of adapting to just doing whatever we had to do um, to not let it take away from our education too much. Students were back in the rebuilt part of the school in the fall of 2020, but the effects of the destruction can still be felt now even in brand new classrooms with new materials. There's still times that I have lessons that I say, oh yeah, we're going to do that, and I go to my, my new um, cabinet and the lessons aren't there. But we have rebuilt and the kids have been very um, recovering probably better than we teachers have. The community joined together forces with the school, offered up uh, Funding, offered up places to have classes, offered up help to get it cleaned up. So it all worked together as a community. And this is a great thing about Burke. They are a small knit community and they take care of everything we've got here. And now things are back to normal for students and community members to enjoy homecoming three years later. Being a freshman coming into high or coming into the high school, we didn't really have one. So it was mostly a lot of different classrooms. And then after COVID happened, then it was still a really weird school year. So we didn't have a normal school year to about last year. It's really cool that we have a normal school year again, especially with our tornado and COVID. It's just been way different and probably not a normal school year and school life that we've had. The energy is just kind of, it's unmatched. You know, we have a lot of school spirit, whether we have a whole school or not. I think there was a really res a resurgent in kind of like school pride and community pride. We really came together 
uh, as a community because of that tornado and we all had to kind of come together um, to get through it. I'm just very thankful to be here. I'm thankful for all of the support that not only our community gave, but also the, the um, my coworkers and my co-teachers across the state. They were so ever supportive, and I'm very thankful for that. With Eye on Kelloland, I'm Carter Schmidt. God, I love the spirit of small towns. Homecoming in Burke was September 5th through the 9th. So glad they're back in their classroom. Absolutely. Awesome. Well, Darren Clark will